Good morning, this is Steve Chapman from Electronic World Publishing at Apex 2015, final day of the show, and in fact the final moments of the final day of the show. I'm delighted now though to be joined on the booth here by Mark Curry from Henkel, who's got some interesting news. Mark, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you for seeing me. And uh, you, you guys launched some stuff here which is quite significant, and uh, certainly from my experience in the electronics industry, especially being very knowledgeable about screen printing as I mm -hmm. became over the years, yeah. supporting a particular premium brand. You know, I'm familiar with the issues with solder paste and stuff, and you guys have yes, implemented we have. what you're calling a game changer. So you know, start off by telling me about that. Yeah, it's a very good point. Um, game changer yeah. is, we, we thought of a term which would capture the imagination of the electronics industry. Not just launch a new product, but give some attribute to make somebody think about it. Yeah. So what we've done is, let's thought of, we took the product back to basics and understand when we go to a customer, who do we talk to? And we talk to two sets of people, or three sets of people typically. We talk to purchasing, we talk to R&D, and we talk to production. production. And very rarely, they have the same target. Cost yeah. is for purchasing, Purging. and yield is for production. Yeah. And they don't go hand in hand in terms of the balance. So you have the best quality product, doesn't necessarily mean it's the lowest price product. Indeed. So from that point of view, we then thought, well, there's a mechanism which has to balance. There's a seesaw effect. So you want to please both sets of people. But one thing you do find out is these two pe sets of people don't normally talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we then found out was, well, let's try and work out how we can address those groups of people. So let's look at the logistics side, and then let's, let's look at the production side. Well, logistics, what we're trying to do is to reduce the purchasing costs. They all sure. have aspiration to reduce costs. So we thought, well, how does the cost increase? Well, you obviously, you obviously have metals in the solder paste, yeah. but then you have all these freight and duties and extra costs linked into yeah. all those attributes. Yeah. All those costs are linked into the paste having to stay stable because the paste is typically refrigerated. That's a cost that the yeah. industry doesn't need to want to carry. And then when the paste gets to the, to the warehouse, the customer, where does it go? It goes into refrigeration also. Yeah. And guess yeah. what happens there? More costs get yeah. eaten up. And then the paste goes onto the production line. Oh, guess what? You have to wait for it to get to room temperature. More cost. And then we start talking about the attributes of the product on the production line for the other group of people. What do you want the product to do? And what are your typical challenges? And one of the things you find is the industry has got a lot of protocols which have been developed over 15, 20, 30 years, and not many of them have changed. Yeah. So we want to think about, well, okay. if I put a paste on a production line, how many hours can I use it? And then if I have a break, how much time am I allowed to have a break? Yeah. And what happens if I have a break beyond that time frame? Do I have to scrap the paste? Or can I use it? What do my protocols tell me? So we start talking to production and find out, well, what is your touch point in terms of paste usage? When does the paste volume start to vary? Yeah. Is it when you have idle time or is it the product failing on the production line? So we get the response back, well, it's a combination of both, but basically we're tied down to protocols. So in history, Customers will say, I have a 30 minute abandon time. So the time between two consecutive prints. Yep. If yep. it's 31 minutes, that paste is scrapped, thrown away, and new paste comes out. And if the paste is refrigerated, oops, I lost another four hours. <laughs> We're waiting for that to come back up. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. You, you lose all the gimmicks in terms of the product. So, so the logistics and the production, the production side of trying to get a product which meets all the aspirations of, of the current industry and more. Yes. So we try to change how you think about how the protocol should be written. So if you want pace to have an abandoned time of one hour, two hours, four, eight, 24, 24 72, yeah. do you want that as a target? Well, here's a product. Do you want a product that wants to have a stencil light which goes through one shift or two shifts or three shifts without having to take the paste off the stencil? Would that be a benefit to you? You yeah, can tell what the response yeah, yeah. is going to be. Yeah. So I have protocols from purchasing. I have protocols from production. I want to change how you think. So that's why we start thinking about changing the mindset, so game changing. Yeah. Then on the attribute side, when the product's working in production, well, you want to get the paste to best performance. You want the transfer efficiency to be second to none. You want the paste to reflow and yeah. wet out, like it used to be with tin lead. Yeah, well, yes, but you're all rhetorical questions, aren't they? They're, no all, gonna, they're yeah. all rhetorical questions, but yeah. when you start talking about this term here, game changing, is they're all rhetorical questions, but we want to address every single point there. Yeah. So when we started this project development, it's not something we said, you can do that next week. 
It's a project we gave time to use the building blocks of technology mm. that we've developed in the lab over the past 20, 30, 40 years. Use those stones of intelligence, find out which ones they want to use in that brick wall, and then bring them all together. Now, to address the first part of the extra weight in the package of shipments, keeping everything refrigerated. Yeah, yeah, the coolants. Oh, the coolants. Yeah. So what yeah. we're trying to do there is to try to make sure the pace stays stable. We, don't, we stop reactions taking place. That's what the refrigerant's there for. So to understand why that happens is the first part of developing the new product. You have all those building block foundations, but you have to then understand the mechanism of failure. If you understand the mechanism of failure, then you can actually attack it with a product that can be stable yeah, for can, a long it can time. Develop for it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we do. We understand how to prevent tin oxides forming yeah. so fast, because then they react with the materials in the flux, and then cause the instability and the cause the paste to fly off. And so we look into how to make sure the powder and the flux stay as a homogenous product. The paste stays homogenous, then the paste will have longevity. Yeah. And so that's what we end up doing. So the team had many years of developing and many formulations to get yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, I hear you, and that's great, but you've got, you know, setting out with that challenge in mind yeah. and then being able to physically formulate it. I mean, mm. other people must have gone down that route before and worked out to, to, you know, to deliver a product that seems to fit you know, every dimension, which is really what you're taking in the poem. And, and actually to come up with it and physically make it and deliver it and then launch it at the show. I mean, you know, it, yeah, it's one thing to have the idea, it's something else to physically get there. Yeah. So what did that take? So it's a very good question because... <laughs> why you guys? Why us? Well, why not? <laughs> Well, that's a good answer. So, so why not? That's a good answer. Why not? The industry has strived to have cost reduction for many, many years. We could have temperature stable product five, ten years ago. Yes. So paste that can stay Indeed. stable for a long time. But guess what? But it wouldn't print or reflow if you sure. want to have everything. The marriage of all those three things together, you know, like a big Venn diagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah bringing them all three together, you, there's a sweet unions spot. Unions and intersections exactly. and all that. Yep. You want to have this sweet spot to happen. We can print yeah. day on, day yeah. out have stability but then doesn't reflow and then the reflow as we all know is getting yeah. more and more challenging because boards are getting smaller yeah. but the yeah, complexity yeah, yeah. is getting yeah. worse yeah, we know. Yeah. so we have to try and work out how to fit all those things together but I'm trying to work out why now what changed you, know, you talk about your Venn diagrams and I get that mm -hmm. and I can see the things but you know is this is there some material technology is it is it some new expertise? Is it some research that came together? Was there, was there a particular tipping point that you went, you know what, we can do all this? Well, I think it's, it's to the point of the industry started the lead free. Yeah. It started the halogen free. Yes. So Absolutely. trends happen within the industry. The biggest concern when you're going to find the powders, solder powders for production, yeah, yeah, is the instability of the solder paste. If you go into type 5, type 6 paste, the stability is very poor. Yeah. The shelf life is one to two to three months of refrigeration. Yes. So we're seeing the trend of the industry going that way. Now is the time to bring this product to market because that is what the industry is striving for, is improved stability with a product which is typically unstable. Now we have something new to offer. Yeah. It was an opportunistic time yeah. to yeah. go into the market because the industry is accepting trends. If you go 10, 10 15 years ago, lead free come along, we saw how much people said resent it, no, yeah, nothing. Right. And then the automotive industry, they didn't accept it. Yeah. They still haven't totally accepted it. No, and, and defense? Defense, was well, still on tin lead. Yeah, they are. Lead free then kicked in, and then a few years down the line, you know, halogen free came in, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't a legislation, but people accepted it, and people are very sensitive and want to be sustainable and environmentally friendly. Now, taking all those things in consideration, environment is one of the major things we want to be sustainable with less waste why not offer a product where the customer is producing less waste yes. and yeah. becomes more socially active in the marketplace and promotion higher yield and productivity and less scrap and that's it it's a win-win situation it's a win-win situation it just, happened, it just happened now i guess it's going to happen at some point it's it's it's, it's a, yes an evolution yeah, yeah. and four years, five years down the line, this is where we're at now. We have a product which is good enough to bring to market and it hits all the tick boxes yeah, we set originally. And I think a four year, you know, a four year development cycle for something that uh, appears to be so revolutionary is pretty good going. I think yeah. that's pretty good going. And it, so. you know, it's one of the hardest things to do is, you know, you have, you, the market is very dynamic. We yeah, all know it yeah. changes daily. You have to yeah. have 
you have to have courage to have two, two, three sets of platforms of projects mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the hope that you arrive at the right intersect at to be right able to point, bring, yes. yeah, to bring a product which is relevant to the marketplace. Well, I think it's great. I mean, I, I, I'm pleased you came along because I really wanted to know more about mm -hmm. it from the little presentation I saw from your team yesterday yes. here at uh, San Diego. And so mm -hmm. uh, I was fascinated because it, it does seem significant. So yeah. thank you really, really very much, Mark. Thank for coming you very along much. Thanks a lot for your time. Bringing us up to date. Appreciate much it. Much appreciated. That's great. Thank Thanks. you.